This is Jim from Realtooth.net. It is November the 2nd, 2019. And this is a companion study to Lesson 30, Signs of the End. And I was just meditating and contemplating on what we're looking for and thought I'd put together another video on what we're looking for as we approach the end of these days. So this is the return of Yeshua. And in the preface to starting right off, we know that Yahweh is the only one that knows when Yeshua is going to return. While we are not told the day nor the hour of Yeshua's return, we have been given signs to watch for. Just as Israel was given the signs for Yeshua's first appearance, we in this age have been given the signs of Yeshua's second appearance or his second coming. We are told over and over to watch. But what are we watching for? Does it make any sense that Yeshua told us to watch and did not tell us what to watch for? And then Yeshua even said he had foretold us all things. Now many have taken this watch means that you're watching your soul, you're watching your your so that you do not commit sin, that you do all these things because well, you know, you could die tomorrow. Yeah, that's true. That is absolutely true. But when we're talking about the return of Yeshua, there's something a little bit different in the word that we're looking at. And it's not just watching over your soul. It's watching the times. It's watching what is going on. No one knows the day nor the hour. And this is very clear. The word cannot be any more clear than it is on this subject. No one knows only Yahweh, only our Father, only the Elohim. Matthew twenty four thirty six. So that day and hour knows no man, no not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. And Mark 13.32 gets even more clear, but at that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, and neither the Son, but the Father only. And he says, watch, therefore, for you you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Yeshua does not know. The signs of Yeshua's return. And like I say, this is a companion video to the signs of the end. But I'm just sticking to a couple of very specific things here that uh, we watch for. And we've been given some very definite and clear signs of Yeshua's return that we are told to be watching for. Now Yeshua reprimanded the Jews of his day that they could not discern that they could discern the signs of the weather but could not discern the time of his appearance. They had the scriptures the toll of his appearance 490 years after the rebuilding of the temple and they were told what to watch for in the coming great prophet spoken of by Moses and the prophets. But they did not believe Moses and the prophets 
and were looking for someone of their own imagination or their own image that they had made up in their own minds. They didn't believe they made up something in their minds what this should be that is coming. And we must be careful not to do the same thing today. Making up an image of how we want it to be and not accept the signs we are told to watch for. The fig tree parable. The fig tree parable has been much talked about and has been generally fully accepted in that theological world as the Jews return to the land of Israel. Now while this may be a possible interpretation of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the only, understand this, the only reason for this interpretation is because of the fact we see the Jews back in the land of Israel today. However, it is stated very clearly and none of the writers made any confusion about this, that this was a parable, not a sign nor a prophecy. And this parable was of the same manner as the steward parable. And Yeshua said, just as when you see the fig tree shoot forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same manner, when you see the things that he had just told them about, the time was near at the door, and that generation would not pass until he returned. Now also notice, this is a real, take a real big notice of this in Luke 21, 29, that Yeshua also referred to all the trees, not just the fig tree. And you'll notice here that he referenced the weather, which he had admonished them about. That's what the reference was. He even determined the signs of the weather, and you can say, hey, it's going to storm, it's going to do this, but you can't discern the signs of the times when they've been given to you. Yeshua never said, now get this, understand this, Yeshua never said, nor did he imply in any way that he was referring to the fig tree as Israel coming back into the land. The land was promised to Abraham and his seed, which we know, which we know was Yeshua. So the land was promised to Yeshua. The promise of the land was not to the unbelieving bloodline. It simply was not. But see, no one believes that. No one believes Moses. No one believes the prophets. No one believes Yeshua. No one believes what Paul wrote. No one believes what the apostles said. They do not believe it because they are so attached to what they want to believe. Now, when we think of the generation passing in reference to the return of Jews, of the Jews to Israel in 1948, it brings much confusion about which generation that is. How do we know? Was it my father's generation? Is it my generation? What generation is it? We don't know. So how can we really understand the signs of the time, right? But 
But if we think of the generation passing that sees these signs, then this confusion is cleared up as this is this all takes place in about seven years. It happens very quickly and the word holds true with no confusion. It's when you when you tie the fig tree parable into a sign of the times is where the confusion comes in. That's where the false doctrines come in. That's where all of the uh, misinterpretation comes uh, into play because you have made the parable of the fig tree a sign when the parable of the trick fig tree was not a sign it it was exactly that it was a parable when you see the branches yet tender and puts forth leaves you know that summer is nigh it does not say when you see israel come into the land and possess the land again, you know that the end is near. That is not what it says. It says that you he was referencing it so that you would know that some when you see a fig tree or when you see all the trees, and remember he not only referenced the fig trees, he was talking about the springtime when you're looking at the trees, but he chose fig tree and all the trees. Now, did Mark and Matthew just leave out all the trees? Did Luke make this up? doesn't matter what you want to think or believe, but it says all the trees are in there. So you have to, you have to equate these to this. So all the trees, when you see them tender and budding, you know that summer is nigh. And then he goes on, so in like manner, so likewise, so in like manner, so likewise, so in other words, just as when you see the fig tree in bloom, you know the summer's coming, the same thing applies when you see these things come to pass, that you know that the kingdom of Yah is nigh at hand. And he says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. And look at that. Likewise, when you see these comes, know that it's even at the door. So in like manner, when you see these things come to pass, know it is nigh. In like manner. It didn't say this was the manner. It didn't say this was the prophecy is a parable. And it, it is a huge, huge error on the parts of theologians and prophecy watchers and everyone to equate this to Israel coming back into the land because the word does not say that. And I got and I'm going to I want to just stop here for a minute for anybody that might be watching this. I want you to ask yourself a question. Does anyone that preaches about the fig tree being Israel coming back to the land do any of those people believe that Yahweh is the Elohim, that he is the sole creator, that he did it by himself. Do they believe that Yeshua is indeed the son of Yahweh who came down from heaven and came in the form of a man and died? That he is not God, that he is the son of God. 
that he was made much better than the angels that he was created. Do they believe that? Those are the questions you have to ask yourself. Do they believe in a preacher of rapture? Do they believe something like that? See, every one of them, as far as I know, if somebody wants that's hearing this wants to correct me, tell me somebody that doesn't, but as far as I know, every one of those people that preach that this is Israel has false doctrine. They don't believe, they already don't believe the word. Okay, the signs. I'm going to talk about really two signs in this video because they're probably the most important. The first sign that we are given, that we are going to see, come before us in, in the, the Signs of the End in Lesson 30 talks about this, maybe in more length. Um, but the first sign of the end of this age before Yeshua returns we find in Revelation 11, there will be two witnesses or two prophets that will bring much distress on the kingdom of the anti-anointed or the antichrist. And so backing up from that premise that we know this anti-anointed one will have a kingdom in power over this earth before the two witnesses appear. Once these two witnesses appear, we are told it will be at least 1,260 days or three and a half years until they are killed by the anti-anointed one that came out of the bottomless pit. We can't get around it. They are coming. Now, many prophets, many, I guess, modern day prophets, many <clears throat> equate uh, this to all kinds of different things and try and say that it's uh, two, 1,260 years and all of that kind of stuff. They try and say, well, <clears throat> the two witnesses are the Old and New Testament or, or try and identify who they are, which you watch my two witnesses video you find there is no identification as to who they are we won't know them until they appear on the scene but these are the very very first sign the first sign is going to be the uh, son of perdition this anti-anointed one setting up his kingdom and that may even be vague to us it will not we will have the perfect understanding when the two witnesses appear. So it's really the two witnesses that that sets the sign for us. So how does this align with Daniel eight fourteen and Daniel twelve, eleven and twelve? Well, this writer or this speaker is, I'm not sure, but uh, one thing I am confident in, I am confident in the understanding of the word we have in Revelation 11. The anti-anointed one and the two witnesses are the first sign we will have of Yeshua's first return. And we do not have that today in this world. It is not here yet. So we're still waiting on the first sign. We are watching. We are watching. Revelation 11.3 
and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, or one thousand two hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. And these are the two olive trees, the two candlesticks standing before Yahweh of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man uh, will hurt them, they must in this manner be killed. We will see this happen, folks. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. It's not going to rain. We'll have power over water to turn it to blood. We're going to see that and smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. But we're going to see these guys... These prophets are going to wreak havoc upon this earth and upon this kingdom. Yeah, we'll be here, but they're not going to hurt us. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit, the anti-anointed one, shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. See, they're two witness to they're the same thing. That's our first sign. The second sign that we're looking for that we're going to be given as as it comes to the end of this 1200 in 60 days. Second sign we were given is that the sun, moon, and stars will be darkened and will not give their light. And this is after, this is after the tribulation of those days. It appears to be after the two prophets. I say it appears that way because when you put it together, that's what it looks like. And this is described in different ways throughout the word, but all the same event. The one common theme of this event, the darkening of the sun, moon, and stars, when it happens is that it is then we will see the sign of the coming or the coming of Yeshua. And if we are not watching for these signs, then we will not understand. And it will overtake us as a thief in the night. If we make up our own fables and fairy tales of these events, then we will be looking for the wrong things. And again, it will overtake us as a thief in the night. If you're looking for a pre-trib rapture, if you're looking for uh, something other than what was just laid out here, then you're looking for the wrong thing. You've made up a fable. You've made up a fairy tale because this is what the Word says. In Luke 21:25, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress and a nation's perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men hearts failing them for fear. We're looking after those things which are coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then, then, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud for great glory. Mark thirteen twenty three goes and be and take heed, behold I have told you all things. But in those days after the tribulation the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in the heavens shall be shaken. And then, 
And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he shall send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the other mo- uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost parts of heaven. Matthew twenty four nineteen. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the two witnesses are killed, dead in the streets. Maybe that's when the when the sun is darkened. I don't know, but and I'm not even going to make a speculation. I can think a lot about that. But Matthew twenty four twenty nine. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon will not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and the then and the then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. In Isaiah 13, 9, Behold, the day of Yahweh comes, cruel both of wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it, for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. See, Yeshua is coming back to rule for Yahweh with a rod of iron with cruel, fierce anger. He's going to lay it desolate. He's going to stop the sinners. And the sun's going to be dark. Joel 2 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain and let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the day of Yahweh comes, for it is nigh at hand. And the earth shall quake before them, and the heavens shall tremble, and the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp very great, for he is strong that executes his word. For the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? And I will show signs, I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into the blood before the great and terrible day of Yahweh come. Yeshua is being sent with his army. He is going to make war, remember? Well, we're going to get to that. He is coming to make war. Yahweh is sending forth. Yahweh's voice is going before his army. Yahweh is sending out his king and his army to do this. But before he comes, the the sun is going to be dark and the moon. This is turned into blood. Don't know how that's, that's it's different. It's not given its light. The first resurrection of the dead. Okay, the Bible is very clear on the point of the resurrection. Absolutely, perfectly clear. And this resurrection, known as the first resurrection in Revelations, is as being after the signs and events we are to be watching for. Yeshua is telling his bride, his loved ones, his brothers, his those that he paid the redemption price for, be watching for this stuff. And if there was something like a pre-trib rapture, this would all be total nonsense, which proves a pre-trib rapture uh, doctrine is a lie from the devil. Revelation 19 and 20 
Chapters 19 and 20 highlight the events at the darkening of the sun, moon, and stars. It'll be a great war. As we notice, men have the deceiving mark. They've received it. All of these things are going to happen before Yeshua returns. And in the midst of the return event, we are resurrected. But as to what day or hour, we do not know. But the signs we do know, we know the signs if, if, if we will believe what we have been told and do not make up our own fables and fairy tales about what we would like to have happen. Stop making things up. Mark 3.27 And this is after the darkening of the sun, after you see him coming, after everybody is seeing him coming in the clouds, And then shall he send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of the heaven. In Matthew 24, 31, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trump, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. We are all sitting here waiting on that trump, are we not? Every believer is waiting for the sound of the trump so that we can receive our redemption. And it's going to gather from from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven, wherever wherever we are. We're in the grave, come out of the graves. This is the one and only resurrection of the righteous, the first resurrection, notwithstanding the first fruits. The first fruits which came from the graves when Yeshua was resurrected, those are the first fruits. That's well, not the first resurrection. It's the first fruits of the resurrection. Just like the uh, first fruits of the of the field are not the harvest. They're the first fruits of the harvest. Revelation nineteen nineteen. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat upon the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken. Now, go back and read all of Revelation. I'm just reading this part. This is when Yeshua is coming in the clouds. He's with the army that we read about in Isaiah. And that Yahweh sent him forth. It is not Yahweh on the horse. It is Yeshua on the horse being sent by Yahweh, the only Elohim, the one sitting in the heavens. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together to make war against him that sat upon the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which had deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. See, that's already done. And them that worshipped his image, and these both were cast alive into the lake, into the fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold 
on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations any more till a thousand years should be fulfilled and then he must be loosed for a little season. So when Yeshua returns, the evil's getting taken care of. It's being moved out of the way for a season. And I'm on Revelation 24, and I saw the thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yeshua and for the word of Yahweh and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, and neither had received his mark in their foreheads or their hands and they lived and reigned and with the anointed a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. And they shall be priests of Yahweh and of the anointed and shall reign with him a thousand years. What happens with, during the thousand years is of no matter to us. We're reigning, ruling and reigning with Yeshua, the anointed king of Yahweh, anointed by Yahweh. But this is about looking at the a few very specific signs that we have in front of us to watch for watch for. We need to be watching for these things. So as always, I pray that Yahweh will forever bless his word. And we always say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah.